call the meeting to order at 6 15. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Approve the minutes of Tuesday, November 22nd. It was a regular board meeting. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, so moved. Fourth correspondence slash communication. Um, now we'll have time for public comments. So we have a quite a few public on tonight. Um, everybody's on virtually, right? Well, so on your screen, could you do the raise your hand feature if you'd like to speak? I'll call on you. Do you have any public comments? I'm fine, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, so Jamie, you're actually your report. Um, so you have my report in hand. Um, I just, I wanted to um, highlight real quickly, I, it's in the report, but we had our first uh, WRBSU community conversation um, evening last Wednesday at the South Royalton campus of the White River Unified District and some of the public that were there are in attendance tonight so I want to thank them that did come out for joining us in the two-way conversation. Our next one will be um, in January. They're all during the second Wednesday of the month um, and so and we're hosting a community conversation at each one of our operating districts um, this school year. And so my goal is to continue this right through next year and there will be one at Granville um, uh, Hancock Unified District for next year. I just wanna mention that for those board members, by the time we got this up and rolling it was December and we didn't wanna hold one in June because we were worried about attendance, but we will restart it again next fall. Um, and so that was advertised in the Herald um, we've got flyers out in, in all of our communities, and um, I'm, I hope that uh, some of you will consider joining um, in your different roles. So I just wanted to highlight that. The other thing um, I just wanted to mention is that, of course, we're in the thick of budget season. We will need special meetings this coming month that we will be talking about in all your local districts to either finalize budgets or certainly after we finalize budgets, uh, get um, warnings adopted. So just, and also act on your summer um, 23 uh, projects through EEI is going to happen this month as well. So January is going to be busy. I don't, they don't need to be long special meetings. We'll have all of our work done ahead of time, but do know that we're going to need to leverage some special meetings this month in each of our districts um, that are have town meeting happening in March. Okay. Um, otherwise, I just wanted to highlight, um, you'll see a report that came out through Ray's office around average daily membership um, and equalized pupils that I, I found really useful. I hope you did as well. Ray's also been working on a project to secure population projections for each one of our operating districts um, so that we'll have those by spring to continue to use those to make informed decisions. Uh, we're doing that through NESDEC, which we've joined uh, for the first time, which is a consortium of New England schools. Um, and part of what they provide are some population and SPED pro projections. So those will be um, forthcoming this spring. I want to thank uh, board member, actually, Davis, who just joined us tonight for really helping me spearhead that connection um, around using them. So. I'm hopeful that it's going to give us uh, solid, meaningful information. But you also have an ADM report that Ray put together and that will address if you have any questions on that report during his report tonight. And I'll take any questions, folks, now. Any questions for Jamie? Okay.
Okay, thank you. Um, a lot of continuation of things we've talked about in past months around our work in literacy and math. Uh, our work with the new report card um, that had its first uh, outing in early December after, at the end of the first trimester in the elementary grades. Um, I think one piece that is worth um, going over ver verbally is the uh, additional information that we received from the Agency of Education around the, what they're calling VTCAP, Vermont Comprehensive Assessment Program. That is, the, that is what is replacing SBAC and NECAP before that. So that's the state summative that will be taking, uh, students in grades three through um, 11 will be taking in, um, in May of this year. Uh, and we don't have like full view into it yet. Uh, Ray and I should be trained in sometime in late January. Uh, and be able to train also um, the rest of our school-based folks uh, soon after that. It is going to be a tight window. Um, usually that training happens back in October and November, so we're not getting trained for you know, a couple extra months, and so all of that will get scrunched in, but um, hopefully it won't be too different from previous years. There is some, they, they, um, the Agency of Education does share that they, they chose CADME as the, because of the, the the accessibility of the portal um, and uh, the parent and caretaker fa facing information. So hopefully all of that will make it really easy for folks to, to see the information and, um, and hopefully make it easy to use. Uh, again, we'll be using that. Um, we'll be testing in May across our grade levels. Uh, and I think, um, I think that's probably the most important thing. So I'm happy to take any questions on other stuff that has come up for folks. Um, actually, I Quite a few people mentioned that they didn't really care for the, or they didn't understand the proficiency based report card. cards. Uh, what elementary? It was a conversation that I had in the neighborhood. Yeah, no, that's helpful. They, they, they didn't see. <laughs> I don't know if that means a more clarification. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I definitely had to have a discussion with my ex about why our kiddo was getting ones and twos and things like music. So it was Woo! tough. Ah! Okay, that's yeah. No, that that that's helpful to have. I think there's um, as we as we shift more to proficiency, thinking about how we are really clear about what the end goals are for uh, for students at the end of the year, and how we um, how we measure progress at those trimester marks. So you know, the guidance that we gave is that you are showing you are you are kind of um, you are assessing kids on where you think where they should be at this time of year. Um, and I think that's a skill that we will continue to have to develop to know exactly what does it mean if, if the if the end goal is to be able to count to 120, what is the expectation in December versus March versus June on getting towards that? Um, and I think folks are still um, learning about how you know how to how to sort of dial that in because it has been you know, more of a shift for some of our buildings this year. So I think that's that's helpful feedback. Our plan was figuring that anything new is just. Um, you know, you, you do have to get used to it, was to survey our families and caregivers after the March report card to get all that feedback. So, you know, now when you see from sort of December to March, you see what growth has happened, what's different, then sort of get that feedback. But I'll, I mean, if it, I'm certainly also happy to talk to folks now um, if there's anyone who would like more information or like to talk through sort of their experience of it. Um, I'm more than happy to do that or one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and we can tell people that we will be um, you know, sending out a feedback form for everyone to get more feedback. Um, I think it just, just, just makes sense not coming up for the next school year. That's really helpful to share that. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, Andrew? Yeah, um, one question I did have on the proficiency based report cards is. Is there going to be basically one set of proficiencies for first grade and second grade, and one set for third grade, versus like this? Are, these are the fall um, third grade proficiencies, and these are winter third grade proficiencies. Because presumably, if it's the former, where these are the third grade proficiencies, like when you first come in, the students should be in ones or twos because you're just starting on these proficiencies, and by the end of the year, they should be up to threes and fours. Um, versus, you know, if these are the things they're expected to have known at this point, then they should be at threes. And so, yeah, I think depending on what the answer to that question is, like training the parents about, or informing the parents kind of what to expect would be good. 
for these report cards. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that, that's great feedback, Andrew. I appreciate. It. I think we. I think we could do a better job of of talking about how we think about the assessment. It, it is one set for the end of the year, and associated with each proficiency, we have something called scales, which would tell you sort of what that progress towards that would look like, so that you would. Um, you would know sort of if you're making what we would expect as sort of developmentally appropriate <coughs> progress versus like, oh, we might actually have a gap in skills or knowledge here that we want to like, have more attention to. And the report card's a way to say, okay, if we had, a, you know, um, so that's that's where I think if you have, we, we either haven't assessed it at this time, in which case it should be blank or have a, an A in it, or we have enough information to say a kid is, you know, on, on track for meeting this proficiency by the end of the year, or, We've got some, you know, this is bringing us some questions. We're going to bring some more resources to bear on, you know, what we're doing on instruction in this area. So I think all of those pieces are, are part of um, what the report card can help communicate. Um, and we can do a better job of, of helping families understand those pieces, as well as the teachers who, for whom this is new, um, for, for some of them, for sure. No, I was going to say, I think part of this shift is to make certain that we are teaching and communicating what our curriculum says and holding ourselves accountable because the report card should be a communication tool on what we expect students to know understand and do i think part of what we're still honing in on is training up our faculty and staff to have a really good sense of where within that end of the year proficiency what is it that we expect students to be able to know understand and do in november and then again in March, and then again at, at the end of the year, of course, that's what it states. And so I think it's still us calibrating that internally too, which I expected some growing pains on um, as, as we're starting to actually use our curricular documents to communicate up. All right, anyone else? Please, uh, I would encourage board members though to encourage uh, families if they have questions, to reach back out to their school and or reach out to central office so we can help folks with that. Good idea. Uh, so just some highlights from my report. Um, so the, the spotlight um, that I focused on this month was uh, the new definition of special education which now is actually the same definition, a federal definition, um, unlike before um, Vermont had its own definition. Um, they're now following the federal definition, um, which also then um, Vermont needed to in uh, include their own definition of specially designed instruction, um, which they hadn't had before, um, which I think is which is great. It actually um, outlines um, for families and, and special educators what specially designed instruction is and, and what it's for. Um, unlike before, it, there wasn't a real definition for it. Um, at least now it's, it's clearly um, outlined. Um, so I, I appreciate that part. Um, also, just wanted to highlight that we just uh, submitted our um, December 2022 child count um, to the AOE. Um, and the last piece is uh, Michaela Martin, our intensive programming student support coordinator and I. Um, we're still going into schools and doing trainings. Um, we only have a couple more schools um, to present at for regarding um, our multi-tiered system of supports. Um, and we start tomorrow at the, at the high school with our next session um, that's focusing on uh, accommodations, modifications, and specially designed instruction um, and what it is and how they can start incorporating it um, in their, their unit planning. So. Any questions? Thank you. Sure. So you all have my report. It outlines what's happening in the business office for the month of January throughout payroll and human resources, as well as accounts payable for Johanna, getting all of our annual reports out. <coughs> um, we've submitted our first 
quarterly newsletter to all of our staff last Friday. So the team worked hard to get that out. So that was an informational piece to everybody about what they need to know and important reminders from the business office. And then it's budget season. So we all know what that means. Um, and then FY22 audit update. Do you want to do that now, Jamie, or will you wait? Yeah, we can wait. It's okay. a special item. Okay, perfect. Um, I, in my packet that went out to all of you is our annual financial management questionnaire, which tells you who does what and how throughout the business office. So if there's any questions on that, if you guys are good, I will ask Kathy to sign it as the board chair. Any questions for Tara, guys? Okay. Hey. Okay, everybody. First, I'd uh, like to go through uh, that regular report. So, um, today, actually, because of the slowdown on Friday, I actually got the update for our uh, student information system to have the exports for EduClimber, which we're hoping to soon I'll be able to use. Uh, as a data dashboard. So we have lots of assessment data that we're looking to have in one place and be able to refer to that uh, over time. Uh, talked about the uh, report cards. And Jamie also talked about this deck, uh, population projection. And then in my regular report, I had a bit about ADM. And now to the extra report, the new one about ADM. Go over a couple things. Um, so, what I never understood coming uh, into this position was how short the uh, the window really is, right? So it's a, this year it's nine sixteen through ten fourteen. It's only twenty days long, right? There's one hundred and seventy five school days or whatever around that number, and it's a short window time for the fall for 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 this reason. The numbers have to uh, build up towards equalized pupils, right? So the window happens, we get the first look at equalized pupils last week. Budgets are built, the tax sheets, and then uh, voting on budgets, and then the, the public votes in March. So it's a very short window, and that means if a student joined us prior to the window and left, or joins us any time for the rest of the year, they don't count in the ADM. Um, all sorts of uh, uh, information, and then I'm going to pop down to some graphs, which I think is what people are really interested in, is what do the numbers look like over the past uh, so many years? So uh, I mentioned last time that our ADM was up 2%. The count, the total number of students is actually up 25 and the points, which is what really matters, is up 3%. So the difference is um, we have students who joined us outside the window or a guest student or an exchange student. They count in the total, but not for the points. And when you look at the chart, here we are at uh, 1718 on this end. Um, and it's generally pointing upward towards the right, except for that COVID thing. And uh, one last chart I want to bring your attention to is the number of students we're uh, enrolling internally and externally. Now, the, the district changes from Act 46 changed what grades we operate at. But basically, it's 120-ish uh, students who who are now attending outside the SU. We have more tuition students these days than before the reorganization. Um, of the tuition students, one in seven attend an SU school. Uh, hmm. Any questions? Uh, yeah, I, Ray, I think this report Port is invaluable for a number of reasons, and I appreciate you pulling the information together and make it coherent so we can understand it 
both at the district level and at the SU level. Um, a lot of organizations, uh, success, whatever it is, it's a numbers game and we need students. We need students to attract students and we need students to pick us rather than homeschool, nothing against homeschooling, but I think we've got a lot to offer or a competitive uh, public school or a private school. And I think I find some reason to be fairly optimistic that we're moving in the right direction. If you look at that trend in that last chart that you're showing there, we're moving uh, up, though it's going to take us a few years to match um, fiscal year 17. But it's it's not only so that that our average cost per student can be maintained and be in a reasonable ballpark, but also every student that is not in a tuition classroom, but with us saves us a considerable amount of money. And those monies can be best spent improving our educational outcomes and, and what we're offering to our students. Uh, and I believe this is all of ours uh, important we need to be aware of this and figure out together with our administrative team how we can keep the arrow going up in each dis district school. We all, each district has its own challenges, but I, we can't do it without this information and thank you for providing this. Sure, no problem. It's hard to, hard to know what's uh, of interest and what's uh, minutia, but uh, we had a snow day on Friday. If that had happened during the ADM window, it extends the window out. Right, <laughs> twenty operators. So, um, any questions? Thank you. Um, policy committee update. Um, we had a meeting right before this meeting. We moved the flag policy forward. It'll be coming out to your board, so we've moved it out of committee. So it'll be coming out to the individual lab boards to talk about um, and we have a couple of new policies that are going to come to us next month that we'll be bringing to you I'm sure uh, negotiations council uh, we had our first initial meeting and we're working on getting a second meeting scheduled I would like to put a note out I don't have it on here but the superintendent Evaluation committee. I've sent a note out to the VSBA, and I'll be sending out a note for you guys to get a meeting together on that front here shortly. Um, discussion items. Uh, draft number three of the twenty three twenty four budget. Yes, yeah, so you you guys have the the full budget, and Tara also provided you with the revenue page, um, which looks similar to last year. Um, and also provided you with what the assessment breakdown would look like um, based on the assessment and I can have her talk through those but I just what I wanted to mention to you is is that again like we highlighted last month we are able to add on to FTE and professional staff in the special education budget uh, a full-time special educator and then a, a full-time 504 case manager but see that budget decrease and that is due to us realizing a decrease in out of district tuitions based on intensive needs right so if a student is struggling in our schools due to social emotional concerns one of the tools we may look to is an out of district placement right to get specialized therapeutic services we built a 9 through 12 program last year and so what that's resulted in and it is us not needing to place students out at the rate we were and also has resulted in us being able to bring back some students and so we have that type of programming at the elementary middle and high school level now so i i just wanted to emphasize yes you're seeing a decrease that's not a decrease in staffing actually there's an increase in that budget of two FTE. When you look at the SU budget around fiscal services, curriculum, my office, technology, um, and then you look at the special ed, 
when you combine those, the savings in special ed and the increase to the fiscal services and, and the rest of the operational budget for the, super, the supervisory union, we're only looking at an a, a increase of 16467 So I want to just, I'm really proud of my team's work on dialing that SU budget in. Um, I'm proud of Annette's team's work to be able to bring us forward a special ed uh, budget that I think is going to really do a good job of serving our kids, investing in the right places where we saw that we had some gaps, um, but also do it in a, in a fiscal manner as we're looking at local district budgets where tuition increases are for our school, some of our school choice districts. We are seeing some local district budgets that are high. It was important for me to make certain that the SU budgets we're not impacting those local district budgets. Um, and for some of you, you'll see a decrease in assessment. And for some of you, I think you'll see a real manageable increase uh, in your assessments. And so any questions on the overall budget picture before Tara walks you through your assessments? Because it is our hope to take action tonight so that we have these firm numbers for your fourth draft in January for your local district budgets. And we haven't been having any feedback. It would be a surprise tonight if folks didn't feel supported of the budget based on our last couple months. Any questions on the overall budget before Tara breaks out how the assessments work? All right, looks like we're good. So the central office assessment, as you may recall, uh, those who have been on the board for a long time and those who are new to the board are calculated based on your FY23 preliminary average daily membership and your FY23 October 1 enrollment. And it is an average that we take of those two and that is what determines your assessment for the central office budget. So that's why you'll see a little bit of shift in the numbers there. So the first page is the FY24 member assessment allocation, and it gives you the comparison for FY22, 23, and 24. And like Jamie said, overall, the uh, three districts go down, three districts go up based on your shift in ADM and enrollment. And then special education, that assessment is purely used with just the ADM. So you, again, you'll see there, there's a shift, um, three up, three down. And we bill out the central office assessment twice a year, and we bill out the special education assessment every month because we have more special education bills so we try to build that out monthly. Any questions on the assessment, guys? All right, I'm hearing no questions or discussion on these. Do I can I have a motion to approve the budget? Sure. So remember, Wait. we have to have specific motions. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Are we ready to make a motion, guys? Yep. All right. Tara has a specific wording for you, Sarah, if you're down for it. Tara, you speak for me very well. Okay, <laughs> so we're doing it in two motions. We're gonna accept the central office first and then the special education. Everything you hear Sarah, or Tara says, you just put an S in front and it's Sarah, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So the motion is to approve the fiscal year 2023-2024 White River Valley Supervisory Union Central Office Budget in the amount of $1,978,426. All right, and do I have a second on the motion from Sarah? I'll second. Any discussion on the motion? All right, hearing none, I'm gonna do a roll call, guys. So we'll start with Bill up in the corner. Yay. Uh, Andrew? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Maggie? Yes. Will? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Ronnie? Yes. 
Did I get everybody online? Sue. Sue. She's gone. She's gone. All right, and Kathy's a yes. So, so unanimously, um, we voted to approve the budget. So the next motion is to approve the fiscal year 2023 2024 White River Valley Supervisory Union Special Education Budget in the amount of seven million seven hundred eighty four thousand seventy six dollars. That is moved by Sarah. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? All right, hearing none, we'll do a roll call again. Bill? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Maggie? Yes. Will? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Rodney? Yes. And Kathy is a yes. So unanimously, the special ed budget passed. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. So you all received a copy of third and hopefully the final draft for now of the WRBSU strategic plan. There was one typo I noticed. Mary Shell's name was spelt wrong. It didn't say Mary, so I will fix that. Um, the otherwise, um, I want I, I I personally feel like each revision we we received good feedback and it strengthened the plan. I would tell the board that I think part of the idea would be that we get this adopted and that it is a living, breathing document that we could revise um, as we go. But I think it is important to quantify um, the work that we have going on. Um, and it does give folks a sense of the direction. I think it's a important document for us to have available for new families. I think it's an important document for us to have for our current staff um, and our students and families that we currently serve and also for, for prospective um, candidates that might be considering coming here, right? Fit's really important. Um, and I think that this plan does a good job of highlighting the belief system and the work that's happening across your schools. Um, at that level though, I'll leave it for you for discussion. All right, guys, any discussion on the strategic plan? I personally thought it was really good work and I appreciate all the hard work that went into it to get into the document that it is and I'm excited to move forward with it. Um, Ditto. If, if there is no discussion, I'd entertain a motion to adopt it. Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, the one thing I wanted to say was it kind of reminds me a bit of the um, proficiency report cards that we're giving out to the staff and just that, you know, like kind of lays out what we want to have the SU have, you know, done over the next five years or whatever. And I think it'd be great if we could get like a yearly progress report or report card where we see like, you know, we're progressing on this one or we've, you know, we kind of get an assessment of where we're at on each of these um, as we go throughout this um, five year plan. I like that. Um, Good idea, so, you know, I think if we could get that on the calendar for some time so that there's kind of like a set, how are we doing? Jamie's, Jamie's nodding, so it sounds like something we can do. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I think that's important. Any other questions or comments before we call a vote on this one? All right, hearing none, do I have a motion? I make a motion to accept the WRVSU strategic plan for 2022 through 2025. I second the motion. Any discussion on the motion? All right, we're going to do another roll call, guys. Here we go. Andrew? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Bill? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Will? Yes. Maggie? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Um, one more on here, don't we? Tammy, right? Tammy. 
Oh, yeah. we did Tammy already. Oh, sorry. All right, guys. And Kathy? Yeah, yes. And Kathy's a yes. So strategic plan <clears throat> passes unanimously. Great, thanks. I will do a communication blast out to folks. Um, I'm also working with our communication coordinator, Kate McLean. We will get hard copies out into our buildings um, and in some key places in our community. I think it's another opportunity for us to be sharing the work that's happening um, to then engage in conversation around it. So we'll get to work on that. Jamie, if you get some to our board, we can put at least in Stratford, you know, put them in the library and places where people go to read, you know, and, my, and would read them. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Same in Humber, you can get them in the library and the yeah. town hall. Uh, once I get that, those uh, final versions, I'll, I'll bring them to the board meetings. Great. Thanks. All right. Um, audit update. So we have received the first draft of the supervisory union audit, and I'm working through it with the auditors making final corrections, and you should see your draft of it at your next meeting for review and hopeful acceptance. Nice. Any questions on Tara about the audit? Yeah, I do. Tara, how was working with them this year? Was it, did it work? With a different auditor, it's brought its own challenges. Oh. She Is it the same company or a new? It's the same company, company, yep. But our auditor, who's been with us the last three years, left RHR Smith and went elsewhere. So we have a new auditor that's new to RSU. So she didn't have a lot of the historical knowledge of our supervisory union. So, you know, bringing her up to speed on all of our changes that have happened over the last couple of years, that was a challenge. But, but they weren't jerks, were they? No. <laughs> and we are going out for RFP because this is the last year of that contract. Um, so I will be getting the RFP out. My goal is to have it before I leave here on Wednesday out to the market. Nice. Good. Bus contract, right? Yep. I got the last piece of information I needed for the RFP for the buses. So that is now I just got to finalize it. Jamie does his final review and then we send that out too. We have lots to talk about in January. It's going to be very busy. Um, all right, we have one last chance for a public comment tonight. Um, oh, oh, watch the bus. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. I almost missed that. Do you want me to take it? Yeah, because you went to the training. Okay, so I went to the training uh, that was put out by the agency division that is monitoring the grant. And actually, it's not a grant. It is a rebate. Uh, the feedback that I received in the comments from other districts and schools throughout the United States is that they have run into challenges with obtaining bids um, and making the deadlines for the manufacturing of buses. So there is a lot of feedback given to them on that and what the chances are of extensions. And then the other comments were that some of the bids that have come in far exceed the rebate amount. So schools are now being challenged with trying to find local funding for the additional cost of the electric buses. So we will um, most likely be partnering with Woodstock. I don't know their new merged name off the top of my head. Um, because they Central. Is it, I thought it was Mountain View. Mountain View, oh, thank you. you. <laughs> I knew it wasn't Windsor no, Central yeah, anymore. They also were awarded the rebate as well. Um, and they, when I spoke to Jim Fenn, who is the business manager over there two Fridays ago, um, he was awaiting some additional information from Green Mountain Power. And then Butler Bus, um, who is currently both of our transportation contract, uh, is working on the bid qualifications for the buses. So what I would say to the board is I'm not asking you to take any action on this because I don't want us to lock into pursuing it right now. And so we're going to continue to do our research and update you every month at the SU board level um, around what we're learning and what we're finding out before we act on it. So that's why there's, there's no movement around action on this. Um, we have not budgeted for having to purchase vehicles that weren't part of the rebate program. So we're going to do all of our research and continue to come back to you with information. All right. <clears throat> Sounds good. More to come, that's what you're telling us. 
every month, yeah, we'll update yeah, with you with what we're finding. Yeah. All, right. All right, guys, now back to public comment. Sorry about that. Um, is there any, please raise your hand if you have a public comment before we finish up our meeting. All right, doesn't seem like we have any public comment. Everybody, thank you for joining us. It's great to see people coming out and hearing what we have going on. Thank you. <laughs> we really appreciate it. Um, designations of new hires. Uh, any other future agenda? Um, so the policy committee will have some policy to put in front of the board. Um, and one of the draft policies that we are working on is a board member uh, conduct policy. I mentioned that in my report um, and procedures. Some of our district boards have adopted procedures, operating procedures, and um, some have not. Or you did adopt the um, VSBA model code of ethics um, for board members. The idea would be that we create a policy that really says this is how we do business as board members within the SU and what the expectations are. So a draft of that will be coming in front of the policy committee next month. Um, so I just wanted to mention that um, and there'll be opportunity for discussion on it um, at your next month's agenda. You also have, um, do we do the social emotional reports as you want or just no. at the district? Just a note that at your district meetings you will be receiving your um, social emotional behavioral reports as part of your data report in January. All right, guys. Anything else? Yeah. All right, our next meeting is Tuesday, January 24th. I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Kathy, I think this is the shortest meeting we've ever had. And we started 15 minutes late. I know. Ah, like a record. <laughs> All right, guys. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn and happy holidays. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. See you all. Yeah.